All right, the last um, of our lessons in this area of study. So how can waves explain the nature of light? And that's electromagnetic spectrum, okay? So electromagnetic spectrum, um, it was Maxwell who, James Clerk Maxwell, who came up with, he came up with some equations that explain things about the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, but essentially, if the electromagnetic, if we split it, electro from electricity, magnetic from magnetism. And so what we have is, um, this spectrum of things which is some combination of electro electric fields and magnetic fields so the theory goes that it looks something like this all right so here we have so in the red we've got this electric field so it's a changing electric field um, and in the blue we've got magnetic field and again it's changing magnetic field all right, so, and then the direction of the wave, so it's kind of a three-dimensional thing. And then the direction of the the wave is down here, down the, the z-axis, down in this direction. So the electric field changes in the x-direction. The magnetic field is a wave changing in the y-direction. And those two things put together, and the energy or the motion of the wave moves in the the Z direction. All right, so the electric field component and the magnetic field component are at right angles to each other. All right, so the electric field and the magnetic field are 90 degrees to each other. All right, and also to, to their direction of travel as well. All right, so there's a whole heap of stuff on the electromagnetic spectrum and frequency and wavelength is, you know, is the thing and of course that's connected by the wave equation but if we have a look at, at this um, categorization all right so there's a simple categorization of electromagnetic waves so we come from very long ones down here we've then got radio waves down here tv will Microwaves, radar, infrared, a visible light in the middle here, which is the one we main, ultraviolet, then X-rays, gamma rays and cosmic rays, all to do with the wavelength, which is up the top here, the wavelengths of those particular waves. And so because of their wavelengths and frequencies, they interact with stuff in dis different ways. And this stuff that's in the middle here that we call visible light, What's particular about that is that that inter interacts with the retinas in our eyes. All right, so, and allows us to see the colours and stuff like that. All right, so, in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum, the only thing that's really is special about visible light, that, that range of wavelengths, is that they interact with our eyes. All right, and allow us to see the colours. Otherwise, it's they're the same as all those other things that are listed there. So in terms of the visible light part, here's a graphic that talks about that. So infrared, that's the stuff to, to do with heat. So we can't actually see that, but we can feel that warmth in our, our skin. And then, of course, you know, infrared goggles and stuff like that will allow will allow you to see you know, the, the, the heat uh, or the thermal pattern of somebody or something, but they don't interact with our eyes. So it's about here somewhere at 0.7 micrometres um, that it starts to interact with the eyes. And so long wavelengths, red, long wavelengths. I should write that in red, shouldn't I? Let's do that. So there we are, there's the red line. So red is long wavelengths. Yep, 
All right, so long wavelengths, low frequency. Whereas up the other end, the violet, and whatever violet. Here we are up the violet end, so then we've got ultraviolet. So again, up here, ultraviolet. We can't see that, but that's the one that is responsible for skin cancers. So down here, the violet end, We have short wavelength and high frequencies. All right, and so they each of those different wavelengths slash frequencies uh, stimulates different stuff in the, on the retinas in our eyes. All right, so then I've got another graphic. All right, so another graphic here. That, Gives you, um, in terms of the visible light, what the um, the the colour ranges is. So you know, red is 750 to 620 nanometers, and so on. All right. So you'll notice there's no indigo in there. Indigo. You need to uh, ask Isaac Newton as to why he decided there was an indigo. Um, all the other colours we can see is distinctly different, but the indigo we actually can't. So, um, but Newton decided there was an indigo, so if Newton decides there's an indigo, there's an indigo. All right, and so you can also see down the bottom here that that other um, range spread. So you can see the ranges are not all the same. All right, so it's, you know, whoever's set the standard of what's green, what's yellow, etc. They've the ones that have decided um, where to cut it off. But, um, what would, do we need to know? We need to know about the diff wavelengths are different. Red's the shortest, violet's, uh, sorry, red's the longest, violet's the shortest, and the others um, change in between. Now, in terms of other um, things in the electromagnetic spectrum. Here's a table here that looks at, at those. All right, so here's a table here. Um, so the names we get given to different things. All right, so how these things can be generated in the first column, so how they appear, uh, what actually detects them in the second column, and then properties of those um, different things in the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. All right, so there's some questions in your textbook about that, and then there's a whole stack of past exam questions, uh, 71 in all, so about on this uh, last few lessons uh, so again be selective if one's looking pretty much the same then don't necessarily do them all and leave some to come back to when you do your revision later um, as always make sure you watch those videos they're good and if there's things that I've sounded a bit vague about make sure you ask me